Κυρίες και κύριοι. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome. On behalf of the Stavros Niarchos Foundation, I'm bidding you a very hearty welcome to uh, our appointment of every month on Dialogues, every time on a different topic with different speakers, a different mood, and perhaps on different premises each time. Up to this day, we have been active within the Department of Attica. With most of you, we shared a crossing from Paris this morning as Now, uh, you know, and by now you're fully aware of the fact that this is our very first experience of activities outside Athens. And uh, it is by no accident we are doing so. This is happening because the topic so calls for it. Rembetico means Marcos Van Vakaris, and who says Marcos Van Vakaris says Cyrus. The premises we're in where, right now is very, very emblematic. We are in what remains of the old textile factory. It is a sort of a museum, very historic for Syrus. And this happens because of a very deeply rooted tradition in textile industry on this island. And indeed, just as uh, the file of history of Marcos Van Vakaris starts to unroll, and you people of Syrus and uh, Rembetko lovers know much more than we do, so are we here, Marcos, as a young boy was working next to his mother, who was herself a worker in this textile uh, fabric on this island. So we're very happy to be with you here today. You may understand that uh, to be hosting an event of these proportions outside our usual uh, premises is by far not a simple task. It's a major endeavor. But the history of this island, the nobleness and the warmth of its people is uh, paying for all the trouble and thank you so much for playing host to us. Stavros Niarchos is closely related to uh, the island of Syros. It goes back a long way in time through cooperation schemes and uh, activities. We've been liaising with uh, Caritas Syros, uh, the Association for uh, Care at Home, uh, the Association of Catholics of Syros, to name only but a few of the many, many associations we've been uh, regularly uh, supporting the Syros Fest, uh, Film Festival, and we have been assisting the Enchordes de Organis, a Megali to Marcos Scholli, this musical school uh, who will be performing for them and you will have the opportunity of enjoying these players uh, as part of today's program. Uh, you will be able to have access to pictures and uh, video material from this event already tonight and for many, many days to follow uh, by uh, connecting to the internet on our site. And there will be a playlist of the top 19 most preferred Rembetica uh, songs uh, by musicians uh, that have been selected for you and for us by Spiros Alexopoulos, one of uh, the uh, very well-known aficionados of this specific type of song. Uh, so it is but a minor portion of contribution of ours to this uh, uh, endeavor of maintaining musical tradition alive. Whatever you feel, you hear, you listen to, you taste, every flavor, every sound, from generics to the most intricate details, they are all uh, the outcome of a long uh, and very uh, committed effort by a group of creative people our colleagues at the Stavros Niarchos Foundation, more specifically uh, our uh, team of Dialogi, and would like to thank them by name. Eleni Saluzzi, Asimina Kutrubuzzi, Titika Emanuel, Lina Giotakis, Dimitra Hadzivasiliou, Thanasis Politis, Christos Getas, Ioana Kiosias, Vastidis Laliotis, Lili Paschali, Sofia Cornaro, Kostandinos Zeimbeki, Spiros Alexopoulos, Elina Kleridopoulou, Alexia Komata, All of you who have been so heartily assisting so that today is happening. Thank you for being here. And the floor goes to Anna Cynthia Buzuko, our very own Anna, who will be uh, monitoring and moderating this debate. She will be introducing, first of all, our distinguished speakers, and she will be opening the debate with you, dear friends. 
Thank you, Lenya Vlavianu. Um, let me also bid you hearty welcome to Syros, so on, to what is the 16th version of uh, Viology. We don't need to introduce our distinguished guests because most of you know them. They're very well known, very active, and very beloved persons, each one of them in their own domain. They have much to contribute to this truly very difficult endeavor. Just to give you some thoughts uh, how to touch upon this uh, typical song, Rembetico. So many domains, so many aspects, and so many periods, and so many people, and so many parts of the world where the Rembetico reached. And up to this day, the imprint of this uh, type of song is felt. Starting with Dimitris Mistakidis. Thank you, Dimitris. Uh, thank you personally for being here today, because both you and Yorgos Kokonis have been helping me so much in making this event a success. Uh, we will be able to go back in time, have uh, a trip in time, and we'll find time for all this. We only have two hours for this wonderful trip back in time and to this lovely island to Syros. As Lenya said, it is the very first time the allergy goes out of Athens and is hosting an event outside our usual premises. Dimitri Mustakiedis is a musician and a teacher of uh, popular guitar at the University of Ioannina, Faculty of Music, and Yorgos Kokonis, uh, Deputy uh, Professor of uh, Music at the University of Ioannina. Uh, most of us having, uh, been, uh, having come uh, here, we traveled from Athens. Thank you all twice and threefold for being here. We also have with us Mr. and Mrs. Tsakirian, starting uh, first with uh, the typical things. They are father and daughter. Let us see what is your personal uh, relationship to the instruments. Carlos uh, Tsakirian and Venus Tsakirian, they are instrument makers. She, uh, Mrs. Tsakirian has learned the craft from her father. She continues working this art. And uh, besides the lovely pictures that they will be sharing with us, they have brought products of their work. Mr. Sakirian, you have so many things to share with us, both from Paris, from uh, all of Greece, and from America. And we'll be brought uh, back today. And there is a young woman entering this field. Let's see what the position of woman used to be back then when Rebetiko uh, came to be. But uh, besides all that, uh, thank you all, dear friends, for being here. We want you to be very active in the debate to follow. As we have explained, the objective of these meetings is to have an open dialogue. So we expect that throughout our debate, we'll be having questions put through by you. Your interventions and remarks and observations will be very much welcome. Connect on SNF slash live. Uh, there is live streaming of our event. Mr. Kokonis, a very good opportunity to say hello to uh, students and graduates from uh, the Faculty of uh, Musical Studies at the University of Ioannina. They have been following us, and because you are so uh, true erudites uh, and so conversant with uh, this type of uh, song, we'd like to have more from you. SNF uh, slash questions, that is where you'll be connecting for your questions to be put through. We will be communicating them to uh, the speakers. Prior to starting this nostalgic trip back uh, in time into the history of Rembetico on these lovely premises that, because of their ambience and style, travels us back in time, and really Syros is so full of history, so emotional, so full of feelings. Let me tell you this. I don't remember where it was that I read, and uh, Donis Kunadis also said it in one of his interviews, because indeed he has spoken to us to say saying that um, at a very tender age, uh, Marcos Van Vakaris indeed spent some time working at a textile uh, factory next to his mother, who was also a textile fabric worker. And uh, I repeat that he was a very young boy back then. So uh, if one goes back in time, one might see where the connecting link is between between today and yesterday. With these thoughts, let us start with uh, the uh, researcher and the multi-collector of Rambetico, Antonis Kunavis. And immediately afterwards, we'll be having our debate.
Το τι σημαίνει ρεμπέτικο είναι ακριβώς αυτό που λέμε τραγούδια αυτών που μπορεί να γυρίζουν ασκόπως ή να ονειρεύονται ή να ρέμπονται σύμφωνα με την αρχαία ελληνική λέξη. Είναι πολύ ωραία τραγούδια γραμμένα από νέους. Τι κι αλλιώς αμάνα μου από τα βουνά τα χιόνια τι κι αν θα έρθει να άνοιξες και τη Λαϊδούνα εδώ. Όλα στον κόσμο μάτρια τα πάντα ματαιώτης και ένα λουλούδι ψεύτη που είναι από το Το αρχείο το οποίο έχουμε φτιάξει ε, περιλαμβάνει μερικά πράγματα πολύ ενδιαφέροντα. Το πρώτο ε, σπουδαιότητα για μένα είναι οι αφηγήσεις των δημιουργών, των παλιών δημιουργών του ρεμπέτικου. Το δεύτερο είναι η δισκογραφία. Είναι ένα κεφάλαιο πολύ σοβαρό, γιατί η δισκογραφία δυστυχώ στην Ελλάδα δεν μαζεύτηκε ποτέ από κανένα επίσημο φορέα. Ε, συνεχεία. Αυτό που είχε ενδιαφέρον να μαζέψουμε τα όργανα. Μετά ψάξαμε να βρούμε ε, με τι παίζονταν τα τραγούδια αυτά. Τι είναι αυτά τα μηχανήματα, τα γραμμόφωνα. Υπάρχουν γύρω στου 8 με 10 χιλιάδε δι γιατί είναι τα διπλά τριπλά που έχουμε. Κάπου εκεί κινούνται. Οφείλω να σα πω δεν έχω ακούσει εγώ όλου του δίσκου που έχω, θα προλάβω. Αλλά ακόμα ψάχνουν παρόλα τα 50 και πάνω χρόνια που ασχολούμαστε, βλέπουμε ότι έχουμε κενά. Αν α πούμε δεχθούμε ότι είναι περίπου γύρω στου 20 χιλιάδε οι δίσκοι των μεταφραστών στροφών που να συμμετέχουν Έλληνε, ε, εμεί έχουμε περίπου το 50%. Στα αρεμπέντεκα βέβαια έχουμε το μεγάλο ποσοστό πάνω από 80%, στα δημοτικά 50% και στα υπόλοιπα κάπω λιγότερο. Αλλά αυτή η προσπάθεια συνεχίζεται. Για μα έχει μια ενότητα πια αυτό το, το πείραμα εντό αγωγικών με την καλή έννοια που κάνουμε τον τελευταίο χρόνο σε συνεργασία με τον Ιάρχο είναι ότι πρέπει να κατανοήσουμε ότι δεν μπορούμε να διχωρίσουμε εύκολα το συμβάν που λέγεται τραγούδια των κοιμουσικέ των Ελλήνων. Το ρεμπέτικο είναι ένα δημιούργημα ελληνικών πληθυσμών των μεγάλων πόλεων τη Οθωμανική Αυτοκρατορία, κυρίω τη Μπίρνη και τη Κωνσταντινούπολη που η πληθυσμοί αυτή η ελληνική σε συνεργασία και σε συμβίωση με τους υπολείπους λαούς τις μειονότητες που υπάρχουν στις πόλεις αυτές ε, δημιουργεί αυτό το είδος. Αυτό που έχουμε να πούμε για τη Σμπίρνη είναι ότι και την Κωνσταντινούπολη αποδεικνύεται ότι γίνονται πράγματα τελείως πρωτοποριακά. Δηλαδή είναι αδιανόητο ότι το 1905, 1906, 1907, 1910 κτλ. ηχογραφούν τόση μεγάλη ποικιλία ε, ρεπερτορίου ελληνικού από όλα τα είδη. <Κι> Αυτά στη Σμύρνη των Αρχών του Αιώνα γίνονται πια τραγούδια στη δισκογραφία και περνάνε μέσα από τη δισκογραφία και στην Ελλάδα. Οι βασικές ηχογραφίες στην Αθήνα αρχίζουν μετά 22. Οι δύο αριθμοί που υπάρχουν σε κάθε δίσκο είναι ο αριθμός σειράς και ο αριθμός μήτρας. Ο αριθμός μήτρας που είναι χαραγμένος επάνω στο δίσκο έχει ένα κωδικό πούμε, αριθμητικό και έχει ένα νούμερο λατινικό, ένα, δύο ή τρία, που δείχνει ποια ήταν επιτυχή ηχογράφηση. Στο 95% των δίσκων είναι ένα, δηλαδή οι ηχογραφίσεις αυτές γίνανε με την πρώτη και έξω χωρίς να υπάρχει παρέμβαση άλλου τύπου όπως είναι σήμερα οι κονσόλες και όλα αυτά. Πολλά τραγούδια δεν γράφουν μέσα στην τικέτα του δίσκου, τουλάχιστον μέχρι το 1930 στην Ελλάδα. Από εκεί μετά αρχίζει η καταγραφή πλήρη και έχουμε ε, στα αρχαία τη ΑΕΠ υπάρχουν με μεγάλη πληρότητα ε, τα δικαιώματα των δημιουργών αυτών. Ξεκινάει ας πούμε, η μεγάλη φυγή. Η μεγάλη φυγή στι ΗΠΑ. Μετά από τη μεγάλη κρίση του 1893. Προφανώς φεύγουν και οι μουσικοί και φεύγουν σπουδαίοι μουσικοί. Ο καθαρός ζωουχάρη είναι από την Αμοργό, αλλά στην Αμερική με ένα ωραίο που μου είχε πει ήταν ότι όταν κάναμε περιοδίες που κρατάγανε μήνες, φορτώναμε τα αυτοκίνητα, τα όργανά μας και φεύγαμε. Και λέγανε πού πάμε, σου πάμε σε αυτή την πολιτεία. Τι έχει εκεί πέρα κριτικούς. Ενώ παίζανε τα κριτικά για τους κριτικούς ή τους παλαιοπολίσιους, αυτό που τους έρευνε όλους, το ενωτικό συγκρίκος ήταν τα ρεμπέτικα. 
Σε μια μικρή ηλικία ήμουν 21 ετών, ο νέαρχο ήταν 20. Πήραμε ένα μαγνητόφωνο και πάμε να βρούμε ένα πρόσωπο που και εμεί δεν ξέραμε τι γίνεται. Και βλέπουμε ένα αγαθό καλό άνθρωπο, μα υποδέχεται σαν να είμαστε παιδιά του. Και λέμε αυτό είναι ο μεγάλο εγκληματία, ο Μάρκο, το πιο ιερό πρόσωπο. από την πρώτη στιγμή δεν έκρυψε τίποτα από τη ζωή του. Δεν ήμουν τίποτα εγώ, λέει. Οι μεγάλοι στη θέτα ήταν οπτούντας ο Σκαρβέλης. Εμείς ακούμε το όνομα τα πρώτη φορά. Τι είναι οπτούντας, τι είναι ο Σκαρβέλης. Δεν υπάρχει τίποτα γραμμένο από τότε που πεθάρα στην κατοχή. Από εκεί μετά λέγαμε, τούντας να μαζέψουμε τις κρουσούς του τούντα. Σκαρβέλης να μαζέψουμε τους Σκαρβέλη. Ο Μάρκος είναι για μένα στο ιερολόγιο πριν να μπει στον ελληνικό πολιτισμό. Δεν έκραψε τίποτα παραπάνω από τη ζωή του. Η ζωή του, μόνο που η ζωή του Μάρκου ήταν η ζωή εκατομμυρίων ανθρώπων. Το ρεπέδικο μπήκε μέσα στο χαδοδάκι, μπήκε μέσα στο χαριστάκι, μπήκε μέσα στους καινούργιους. Επιβιώνει μέσα από όλους τους νέους δημιουργούς. Όταν επί 100 χρόνια το κυνηγάνε, το κυνηγάνε, το κυνηγάνε και όσο τρέχουν κουράζουν οι άλλοι, το ρεπέδικο σημαίνει μπροστά μα. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ τον uh, Παναγιώτη Κουνάδη για αυτή τη Thank you Panayotis Kunatis for this interview. And we thank you for all these uh, pictures that you shared with us as an introduction. And we thank you uh, wholeheartedly because all these pictures that will be shown during our discussion is uh, from uh, Kunatis uh, uh, archives and uh, from this whole effort uh, which uh, uh, Stavros Nyarkos Foundation supports in collecting all these items and archive material uh, that uh, started uh, decades ago. But to come back uh, uh, to Syros, uh, which is the birthplace uh, for Marcos uh, Vambakaris, um, we, uh, f- for several reasons, uh, we should uh, focus on uh, the fact that uh, quite early uh, Marcos left the island. Uh, he sailed uh, to Piraeus, where he started uh, uh, being initiated, let's say, in the world of Rebetico. He has a few moments and specific periods of uh, his life uh, uh, where he comes back uh, to Syros. However, he spends uh, most of his life in Piraeus and however, he does not dedicate not even one song to Piraeus. If I can uh, reply, if you allow me, uh, good evening. I'd like to say a a couple of words about Panagiotis Kounadis, but I will do that later. Let's stick with the question, because I don't want us uh, to lose uh, the the spirit. You see, time is uh, quite uh, uh, relative. We've said uh, this has been said for Orsini and Mozart. The Orsini had a, a long life, uh, and uh, Mozart uh, died uh, quite early. But Rossini didn't was not writing music throughout his life. So uh, Marcos left the island at the age of 12. But uh, the dense experience of a very poor child that was doing everything uh, to survive in Ermupolis. Uh, so these are experiences that a current 35-year-old would have. And And uh, we see that uh, in uh, the very few uh, direct uh, but uh, numerous indirect uh, references uh, found in his work. I mean, uh, Ermopolis has left its uh, mark, its uh, stamp on uh, him, because let's not forget that, as Panagiotis Kounadis said, uh, uh, Rebetiko is part of urban uh, folklore. It's uh, the core or uh, uh, the most representative uh, genre of uh, uh, urban uh, folklore, and Ermopolis has been an urban center. So... um, There were so many experiences for Marcos Vambakaris here. He had so many experiences, and uh, um, he made the transition to the new economic uh, conditions, uh, which uh, actually fostered the creation of uh, the urban uh, folklore. This is where we go uh, from uh, folk songs uh, to urban uh, popular songs. So I think uh, he uh, this has left its mark upon him because those were 
very strong experiences. I will give you a couple of examples. I think his first experience was the following. Uh, although Marcos uh, started uh, uh, accompanying his uh, father and uncle uh, with uh, the instrument uh, which uh, represents uh, cyclades, uh, Tsabuna, and uh, uh, there is a great mobility of uh, youngsters uh, today which are playing to be, which is uh, the small uh, drum uh, that accompanies uh, bagpipe. And uh, when uh, he started wandering uh, around um, in the lower part of the city, he came in touch with people playing tsiburi, uh, uh, gonato, taburas, and several other Uh, musical instruments, and he also met and uh, uh, people who were playing buzuki. And obviously, he was trying to steal because this is, you see, the process of apprenticeship uh, for uh, those artists. And in his uh, autobiography, uh, he uh, always mentions Sevaliotis, who was a criminal. Actually, he spent lots of years in prison, and it seems uh, that. Uh, Been in Ermupoli, he has a buzuki in his mind because uh, this is the instrument uh, through which uh, he narrates his uh, stories in uh, songs. Another element which is not uh, widely known is that uh, uh, while being here, Marcos, and uh, doing so many different uh, uh, jobs uh, to earn his living, he was also helping people who were want, were want, wandering around uh, the neighborhoods uh, with uh, Laterna. That's why he says that I have carried music on my shoulders. And a very interesting uh, work uh, of uh, him Pechnidiara is based on the key mechanism uh, which uh, was being stamped uh, uh, back then. Hasapiko από την πόλη, so Hasapiko from the city, uh, which was recorded in 1913. So um, he spent his childhood here, and uh, this uh, uh, involved uh, very strong experiences that have marked his life. So he may have spent his life uh, in uh, Piraeus, but Syros was always in his mind. Good evening from me as well. Well, uh, in terms of uh, history, apart from the traditional music, uh, Tsabuna, Tibaki, uh, Laterna, and all these uh, musics of the, of the city, uh, Marcos has, had also experienced the early Rebetico. Uh, Murmurica and so on, because because do not forget that the first recording uh, that uh, took place in Kelitz by uh, Greek uh, prisoners uh, in uh, camp. There is one recording. There is one of uh, out of three recordings found there with Buzuki when a, a Syrian resident uh, plays. Um, With uh, those uh, uh, lyrics in of uh, the early period of uh, Rebetico, so this uh, was part of his experience because it was recorded. We know that uh, this uh, idiom was found in Syros, so he was carrying that on his shoulders when he sailed to Piraeus. It's not that he found it there; it is that he developed it there. Mrs. Buzduku. Now, if uh, we try to uh, uh, to find out uh, how, where. Uh, Uh, Rebetico appeared and by whom? How could you define the place, the time, and the people? Well, let's uh, give you an update because that's why we are here. Truth is that 20, 25 years ago, it would uh, have been very easy to answer this question, but uh, it would also be a trap because uh, we are here in Ermopolis, uh, Syros, in 2019. Uh, uh, because we have uh, to, to state that uh, this kind of music is, uh, was undermined and prohibited and uh, misunderstood. Um, so this is not a genre of uh, music that has been thoroughly studied. Uh, it was discussed much later when uh, the pioneers uh, had passed away. Do not forget that the book
book that helps us uh, realize the term rebetico is by Elias Petropoulos, and it was written in 1968. Uh, because of the military junta, it would disappear immediately. Uh, so I would say it's difficult uh, to give a reply. It's difficult to answer when rebetico was born, and it's very difficult to describe what rebetico is. I think there are many different places, uh, birthplaces of rebetico with many different uh, expressions or manifestations. From uh, my research, for example, and the, uh, research done by other people, it may sound strange, but uh, in the years of Ali Pasha and a bit later, in the city of Ioannina, there was an urbanized uh, primary school with uh, a few features, characteristics at certain points in terms of lyrics, uh, very close to Rebetiko. Uh, this happened also in Izmir and uh, Iraklio and uh, several other cities where there has been an economic development. Now, uh, if uh, we have uh, uh, to uh, f- identify the place where it was born, we have to take into account the characteristics of pe- certain periods uh, in order to get an idea. Um, Today, though, because this is a subject that has been integrated in academic studies, there are young people uh, who are uh, carrying out uh, uh, pioneer and interesting research. So now we have rich knowledge, which makes it difficult uh, to define the birthplace of Rebetico quite accurately. It's uh, uh, similar to jazz music. It's a parallel history, numerous periods, uh, different developments, different evolutions. Can uh, we focus uh, on uh, the role and uh, the ways in in, in which uh, uh, refugees have uh, actually conveyed and uh, spread rebetico? Uh, let me say something here. Actually, this is uh, loans and counter loans, consecutive loans and counter loans between uh, Greece and the refugee uh, uh, flow. I mean, the first uh, uh, flows of refugees into the U.S. Greek refugees to the U.S. To the US uh, when uh, leaving Greece and when uh, they settled in the new country and with the experiences, the bad experiences they had there, Ku Klux Klan, for example, uh, uh, never considered them as a, a white race and they were uh, going after them. So they had very uh, negative experiences uh, during the first uh, years. So the only thing that could unite them and give them some identity when uh, they run the risk of losing everything has been music. So when they left the country, they took uh, along uh, their musical tradition and they found there a purchasing uh, uh, market, uh, Greek immigrants and uh, uh, recording uh, companies, uh, uh, production, music production companies. And they started recording uh, to be able to, uh, in order for Greek migrants uh, to buy uh, music and uh, and, uh, hear this uh, type of music. This is why. Uh, there, there are many uh, songs uh, that uh, were recorded uh, here and uh, in the U.S. in different forms. And then we import uh, discs from the U.S. and we hear the songs in a completely different way. So it's a, 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 a continuous uh, circle of loans and counter loans, which also triggered uh, the onset of Rebetico as we uh, know it now. So recordings came from the U.S. They were heard by the first the creators, and the, that was the trigger, uh, if you wish. We can say this later, because they found out that there was a strong response and uh, uh, purchasing interest here. Because don't forget that, apart from other things, uh, music is also an output, a product. Uh, music uh, has always uh, been sold, purchased and sold. This is very important for its uh, development. A product, an output, is not uh, necessarily bad. Uh, it can also be uh, products that are uh, sold for a price uh, might be very helpful. So uh, refugees, migrants uh, to the U.S. have played a very important and role, uh, also for the uh, starting of recordings here, because that actually uh, there was a case study in the U.S., and then a big production started here. Uh, could you convey to us this picture from, from the U.S., from the years where you've been there? Yes, uh, I went to the U.S. in 1977. I, I spent 
17 years of my life there, up until 1993, when I came back to Athens. As a matter of fact, uh, most of those uh, outlets on uh, Fifth Avenue that, as you said, were hosting uh, uh, Rebetica songs, I have seen them, I've been to them, and I have had a first-hand experience of these uh, ambience of Greek uh, music. It was uh, the Greek town at the time, so I know what you're talking about. I've been there. Uh, those uh, years were interesting ones. I met quite a number of uh, Greek musicians of the genre, as Yanis Dragasopoulos, uh, Georgos Tsimbidis, uh, Van Vakaris, and many more. Sporos, the Monopolos, to name only but a few of those people. Well, because of their performance, thanks to their virtuosity, because they were virtuosi of the genre, I believe those people have been very instrumental in creating uh, interest in New York uh, in uh, Greek folk and popular music. Please don't be stressed, uh, Mrs. Buzuku says, and, you know, it's, uh, you're between friends here. So, well, uh, I worked in the States uh, some six or seven years with my father. He left us early in 1983. What I can say is that uh, although I started uh, working in Athens at the age of 14, I was a bit uh, reticent uh, in uh, practicing this kind of craft. As a matter of fact, I didn't know what I would like to do back then. Uh, everything was uh, in the air and all options were open. I spent some years uh, at the college and later on at the university in New York. But again, I was not sure what I wanted to do with my life. But once my father died, everything settled. All of a sudden, I was overwhelmed by passion for this kind of work, and I found my true vocation in life. Ever since, uh, I have been investing uh, in spirit, in soul, and in efforts, trying to be of service to uh, the popular Greek music and this specific genre. And of course, uh, more things happened, and we'll see and have more from Venus, your daughter, who also entered this uh, realm. Uh, before watching a video from your uh, workshop where you manufacture these instruments, I would like to have something more about these ports, the harbors, places from where one lives, places to which one arrives. Ports are very central hubs for Rebetico, don't you think? Yes, indeed. This is a first picture that is associated with Rebetico. Ports are financial centers, but as very aptly said by Staffi Tamiyanakos, one of the first sociologists of Rebetico, the ports is where Rebetico is uh, flourishing, and these are premises uh, that are dominated by men. It is a man's world, ports are, and imagine a young man living uh, his rural Uh, surroundings, leaving a hometown or village because of the penury of means and because of badly paid works, this uh, young man arrives uh, at the port and once uh, becoming employed, one has money, money to spend, money to spend on pleasure, on ways to diffuse one's pressure from work. So in these hubs, it would only be normal that the first Uh, music halls or uh, joints, to use a mild term, would start to be created. And where there are joints, there are uh, women brought. And indeed, you know, as solitary men have needs, and ports play this very specific role because of the financial activity in there. 
because of the economic activity, the hubs as they are of osmosis, of exchanges, and it is by no chance that uh, Smyrna, uh, what with the uh, taxation system becoming liberated and uh, with the Levantines flocking from all over the world with uh, foreign money pouring in and loans coming from the north, you know, Greece has always been a crossroads culture. Let us not forget that uh, we are also a, a Balkan nation, so uh, we are used to this kind of exchange. The Santuri uh, instrument comes uh, from this uh, tradition. And, uh, interestingly, the Minore song by Giovannikas uh, comes from this tradition. Ports are one of the first centers of uh, urban popular music, and it is there that uh, uh, little by little the delinquent um, community is starting to flourish. Rebetico has been associated to this uh, kind of uh, people, people who live astride between uh, unlawfulness and legitimacy, and uh, this uh, petty delinquency uh, is flourishing. So, uh, Rebetico becomes a poetic manifestation of this uh, world, both in text and in music, lyrics and music uh, of this kind. And this kind of uh, community should be differentiated from uh, people living in other major uh, towns and cities of the Ottoman Empire, uh, much more than Athens or Perius, Alexandria, Cairo, Smyrna, and elsewhere. In those uh, places, musicians, because of uh, the financial boom, uh, become fully aware of their professionalism as such. Perez is not this kind of town. And uh, what with Marcos landing in Perius, a major change happens. Uh, back then, uh, there is a kind of music played at joints, a music that has been highly inspired by light uh, European music and Ottoman uh, aspects like a la Turca musical uh, themes coming from all around the Balkans. At the time, Piraeus is part of the world that is uh, yet to uh, be exposed to this kind of delinquency. When, for the first time, people start speaking about Rembetes, the wandering ones, uh, they have um, remembrances from Smyrna. These are bullies of their time. But bullies are not necessarily delinquent ones, and there is nothing more than about that. In 1912, a record is uh, circulating called Aponia Cruelty. Uh, and for the very first time, uh, the gender is mentioned to be rembetico, by that meaning that the very term starts acquiring different content depending on the time and the place. To remain uh, in the theme of the port, the first greenhouse of uh, music of this kind are the ports. This is where the uh, early industrial uh, economy is starting to uh, develop, and uh, it attracts people also being people of the night. This is also an area where, besides the activities uh, of uh, shipping, there's also smuggling and all other kinds of um, obscure activities, not only in Paris, but also in other uh, harbor towns uh, around the islands. People who uh, live uh, up on the mountains could not have access to the novelty that uh, the ports are attracting, which is why the ports have been contributing to the creation of new genres. Uh, as a matter of fact, many things that were happening at the same time, uh, whether in Istanbul or in Smyrna or in the Americas or in major urban centers and in the outskirts, all this um, fused into a kind of mixture that came uh, to be the Rembetico. It is quite difficult to say exactly when it was that this thing started to be. It is very approximate as a date. Could one say, uh, for example, that there is a time when more knowledge is uh, being accumulated uh, about the genre? When is it that experimentation 
gives way to a more professional approach of uh, the creation of lyrics and music. When is it that uh, the Rebetko becomes more professional, more of a product? Researchers are bound to go into the sources and we also deal with uh, oral interviews taken. Uh, the Rebetko uh, prominent figures are gone. Some of them went away quite early. But records remain, and the record industry starts to be, to flourish in our zone uh, around 1906, first uh, in the major cities and later on everywhere. So because of no facilities being around and because of uh, the weight of these bulky uh, equipment necessary for record making, people who are recording have to come all the way to Greece they stay at the hotel from where they start uh, reaching out musicians. And those people uh, also have to talk to someone. Artists of the time have no idea of how to promote themselves or have their interests uh, taken care of. So agents become to appear, and agents are talking to the uh, those who make the recordings. This is how the industry is starting to be. Michalis Arachtinzis or Arachtinzis recorded eight songs in 1896, very early, and we are as yet to find them anywhere. We only know they have existed. Of course, uh, the Americas are uh, in the avant-garde, and the U.S. is uh, ahead of it. There are recordings in major cities and ports that I have mentioned already. So there are so many, so little um, account of what has been happening. And um, at the time, if there was a discipline that could become involved, that was folk uh, science, not even history. And I believe that disciplines, because of uh, uh, them being tools in the hands of uh, the erudites, are away from the everyday down-to-earth people. Whatever the case, little by little, the urban popular song uh, started to trigger interest. Just as there were folk um, scientists that went out in the provinces to collect folk songs, Marcos was coming into town to start uh, performing. Uh, in between, uh, lots of material uh, has been lost. Let us not forget that in the meantime, another kind of music started to flourish, the uh, formalized, standardized uh, folk music. But that's another discussion. Nowadays, as we stand, there are many texts uh, authored by uh, foreign um, travelers. Some of them visited our country in the late 19th or early 20th century, and they do make some mention of it. And we, little by little, try to compose this mosaic and turn it into something more uh, consistent. Just to start understanding how the whole phenomenon developed, uh, we started speaking about the refugees, and many people think that the Rebetiko came to be in 1922. What were the first refugees reaching the Greek mainland from Smyrna? This is not correct. The first uh, nightclubs and joints of the time, and I'm saying this, joint is a term I'm using, at the time, there have been also some uh, joints, we used to call them Café Amman, as opposed to Café Chantant, which was a joint where light music was performed uh, the European way. Well, the Café Amman was a kind of coffee shop that was more close to the Oriental tradition. And you could even find some girls or women there, or some spouses, too. It was more oriental, and uh, amongst other genres, uh, Amane was uh, performed. Uh, well, all this uh, was available in Athens already back in the late 19th century, 1874. The Asia Minor School was already there, but well, there was no possibility to record it. That's something we lost. Up to a certain extent, all this repertoire, all the way through to the early 20th century, was only available. Uh, through written accounts, and sometimes they were of negative uh, content. There were negative comments by some uh, uh, scorning uh, the low morals and uh, uh, 
dissolution of uh, these joints. Even women were scorned. Okay, we'll get there. Let us uh, discuss uh, the instruments of the gender. Let us visit the Tsekirian uh, workshop and uh, get to know Venus. What is the position of women today going uh, from now to then and see when it was that women become present in the Rebetico? Well, yeah, uh, manufacturing of musical instruments uh, is uh, 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 actually a ritual because uh, there are different materials. You start uh, from the vessel, which is going to become an instrument with uh, strings and uh, will make a sound. Ονομάζομαι Τάνια Βένος Τσακυριάν, είμαι 28 χρονών και ασχολούμαι με την κατασκευή έγχορδων μουσικών οργάνων από το 2013. Μουσική το ρεμπέτικο τότε ήταν μια ανάγκη έκφρασης η οποία είχε έναν καημό μέσα. Ήταν ένα βίωμα, ήταν εντελώ μια βιωματική κατάσταση η οποία εκφράζεται και μέσα από τη μουσική και μέσα από τους στίχους και μέσα από τους ανθρώπους που το έχουν υπηρετήσει και μέσα από τα όργανα επίσης. Η επαφή με τη τέχνη ήρθε από τον πατέρα μου, ο οποίος αυτό είναι το επαγγελμά του, το οποίο ξεκινάει από την εποχή του προπάπου, οπότε είναι ήδη τρεις γενιές. Ονομάζομαι Κάρολος Ζαχηριάν. Έχω το εργαστήριο εδώ στην Αθήνα από το 1993 που επέστρεψα από την Αμερική που ήμουν 17 χρόνια. Η αίσθηση της δημιουργίας είναι στο μέγιστο επίπεδο. Δηλαδή νιώθω γεμάτος και ικανοποιημένος. Όταν η κόρη μου ζήτησε να μπει σε αυτή τη δουλειά και να μάθει πώς να κατασκευάζει όργανα. Ήμουν λιγάκι επιφυλακτικό στην αρχή. Πιστεύω ότι θα γίνει σίγουρα καλύτερη από μένα. Σίγουρα υπάρχει μερίδα του κόσμου που μπορεί να θεωρεί ότι είναι μια δουλειά που μπορεί να μην είναι για γυναίκα, όπως υπάρχει κόσμο που πιστεύω ότι μια γυναίκα δεν μπορεί να πέσει μπουζούκι, ας πούμε. Αυτά υπάρχουν ακόμα. Θυμάμαι ακόμα την αίσθηση ότι στο πρώτο όργανο όταν το ολοκλήρωσα ε, δάκρυσα, ας πούμε, γιατί ήταν λέω «ΟΚ, okay, εγώ το έχω κάνει αυτό», δηλαδή αυτό το οποίο κάποιος παίζει και βγάζει ήχο ή θα ευχαριστηθεί, να το παίζει, να το ακούει. Εγώ το προσέφερα αυτό. Πώς είναι λοιπόν μια γυναίκα. So how is it for women? Uh, what about a woman who crafts instruments? Uh, a woman who crafts instruments for specific uh, uh, genres of music? And then I will ask you how it is for you to be with your father and how did you react uh, uh, as a father in the beginning? Good afternoon, good evening rather. Truth is that uh, when I first uh, thought about uh, following this uh, profession, I, I didn't have the idea that uh, uh, my gender, being a woman, uh, would be an obstacle or uh, a statement. It was just a sense uh, that uh, uh, there have been three generations before me uh, that have uh, uh, engaged in this profession, and for some reason they loved this uh, job. They didn't uh, just uh, do it uh, for uh, earn their living. And so when I graduated, graduated from my school where I was very happy and I liked it and I think uh, that was a completely different subject. Yeah, it was history and the sociology of sciences and I was thinking about making a, a master's degree and following an academic career but then I realized that if I uh, uh, didn't try this uh, uh, art, I, I might regret it in the future. So I thought I should not reject it before uh, seeing how it is. So uh, this, uh, this was around 
around 2013. Although I have been uh, uh, wandering around in uh, the workshop uh, uh, since the age of 13, my dad has uh, had shown me how to change the strings and so on. So I dynamically started going into uh, the job. Uh, he was assigning, my father was assigning tasks uh, gradually, and I realized that I like very much uh, manual labor. I loved creating something, and uh, 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 it, uh, I didn't like the passive um, uh, tasks of writing or making research and academic work. So I realized that uh, I was mostly inclined to uh, this uh, uh, type of uh, job. And, uh, now, being a woman and uh, uh, what uh, this uh, uh, could mean in this uh, field, while it was not uh, anything uh, peculiar, it was not anything particular, it is just a stereotype and there are social influences in each uh, period of time. and. Uh, this is uh, uh, also related uh, to women in uh, instrument crafting. It has nothing to do with uh, skills. So that was always at the back of my mind. Uh, but how uh, were you faced with this perception? Uh, of course, uh, uh, you supported this in, in action um, because you have indeed followed the job. The job. But what uh, was uh, uh, people's perception. Well, depending, it depended on the age of people, but they were quite reserved and cautious and reluctant in the beginning. Uh, 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 when I started making my own instruments, and uh, uh, what are the instruments that you have been making? Buzuki mostly is uh, the instruments I'm making on my own, but uh, I've, I'm also helping my father uh, craft uh, uh, popular uh, guitars, uh, mandol mandolins, and other musical instruments uh, uh, which uh, we make together. I'm helping him, but uh, what I make on my own is uh, buzuki. So people were reluctant in the beginning. They didn't know whether I would go on doing this. They thought that that, that was just a, a phase in my life. They thought I would not like uh, to be working among uh, 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 filings, iron filings, or um, glue. Uh, this was mostly uh, the perception of older people who thought that this was a field for uh, men, a male-dominated area, and uh, uh, women could only do some polishing but not the crafting. But of course, younger generations uh, were more enthusiastic and they were excited because uh, they love uh, this art, uh, irrespective of uh, who. Uh, is uh, the person, the artist. So I think uh, uh, there has been um, fertile ground and a positive response. Of course, there, uh, there have been reservations or objections. Um, uh, they could not be sure whether I, whether I would be talented enough as my father, or perhaps I was following the job because my father was doing it. But this is unavoidable for any kind of profession. Is this the first woman who is is uh, uh, doing this uh, job? No, uh, the sister of uh, Apartian brothers uh, was also helping them in uh, making guitars in Retsina Street, uh, where they had their workshop. But I'm not sure whether she would uh, uh, craft instruments on her own. What about your family, uh, your tradition? Well, in our family, she is the first one. And oh, it seems that she's doing great. OK, we see that she's doing great. But let's go back to the beginning. When she first uh, told you, when she told you that she wanted to, to try it, because, of course, uh, she had your uh, influence and uh, her first experiences uh, uh, with you. But what was your first reaction? Well, I was shocked in the beginning. I never expected that uh, she would be interested uh, in uh, uh, crafting musical instruments. In the beginning, she started by asking me about my grandfather or uh, her grandfather uh, who uh, would come in the show, uh, workshop. And then she clearly, explicitly told me that she wanted to try and uh, craft an instrument herself. Uh, so I gave her the chance. I put her behind the bench because I wanted to see how she would do. I wanted to see how she would handle the, the tools, the different tools, because she had never used uh, these uh, tools before. And I must say, she has a very good hand. She has a very good hand and a very good ear. Uh, and uh, she is very patient and persistent, and uh, she wants uh, to uh, do perfectly whatever she does. 
Okay, if we stay with the musical instruments uh, uh, we see in Rebetico, and uh, let's discuss the influences or the first influences that have started appearing uh, from Rebetico on other uh, music genres in terms of uh, music or, or in terms of instruments uh, or uh, music uh, currents. Well, let's discuss the musical instruments first because there are two uh, big uh, schools uh, that we must uh, identify. The first uh, uh, ports, big ports and urban centers, as I said before, had uh, two types of uh, uh, bands. One that was identified with the Ottoman court, the Shalton's uh, court, and those were uh, room instruments or a la turca instruments and that was uh, uti uh, cannon uh, lyre and uh, in the for, for the greek speaking audience as panagiotis kunadis said before uh, the the violin uh, features the violin is the king uh, the protagonist and, uh, and then and also sanduri from hungary and uh, uh, vlachia I prefer calling it a violo sanduro, uh, or sanduro violo, as other researchers call it. And another instrument uh, which is played by Dimitris, uh, uh, which was popular uh, guitar, people's guitar, which was not uh, uh, very well known. And uh, those were different types of uh, bands uh, playing also on the islands. Now, the, in, the, the interesting thing is that uh, suddenly a new sound is introduced from a new family. String uh, instruments, uh, mandolins, for example, which were, uh, well, were uh, very well known in the Mediterranean, and uh, buzuki. So these are uh, string instruments uh, where uh, the sound is produced by tapping, hand tapping, uh, and a coin. And then the first professionals appear uh, or, uh, immediately after the um, production. So these first bands appear where violin is the king and we have many different combinations. And although Marcos was not the first one, Dimitris will tell us, we have uh, the consolidation of uh, the local rebetico uh, by Buzuki. And this uh, changes the sound uh, entirely. the major uh, chronicle writer, Van Vakaris, uh, actually captures and integrates uh, that uh, in uh, one of his songs where he says about Buzuki that uh, Buzuki is now uh, on uh, the uh, carpets, uh, expensive carpets, carpets, and at a higher place than violin. That's why uh, Van Vakari is, is saying, I'm not a musician, Tundas and Scarvelis were musicians, uh, because the difference lies in the professional experience, uh, uh, the, the job, because uh, part of music is uh, art and another part is work performance and so on. So the musical instrument aspect, uh, we should say, has been identified uh, with a buzuki, a buzuki baglamas, which are, are all string instruments, uh, pulled the string instruments. And then a tourist that came uh, from uh, Uh, the Netherlands, uh, and he took a buzuki, which is now played uh, there as a, a buzuki guitar, actually. Uh, uh, it's a mutation, if you like. I, in Ireland, sorry, not Netherlands, uh, Irish. Uh, so we have Irish, Irish buzuki, which is quite flat, without this uh, curved uh, shape. So until recently, We didn't have any major influence uh, worldwide, but uh, within the country, I should say, this uh, started uh, being uh, seriously uh, implemented by Hadzidakis and Theodorakis. Those were the composers who seriously uh, worked with uh, uh, songs, 
uh, because there was uh, there was serious music, uh, big uh, forms, and uh, uh, a long discussion about uh, the role of those instruments in the new songs, the new compositions. And uh, Hatzidakis, of course, uh, has always uh, has always been uh, quite reluctant, I would say. Theodorakis, though, has capitalized uh, Buzuki. Uh, to a great extent. Let me say something about musical instruments. Instruments are uh, tools, and the tools are uh, made uh, to serve a certain purpose in uh, specific circumstances. So, Buzuki is not uh, the key, the, the king, or violin is the king. It is uh, the specific conditions and circumstances that will define the instrument and uh, the purpose served. Now we look uh, back and uh, we see what happened but we see that once Marcos dominated in the market, uh, the other instruments disappeared because they didn't serve any market purpose, uh, meaning that actually there was no uh, uh, target to be fulfilled because people had stopped already uh, listening to this kind of music for several reasons. It's also a matter of uh, 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 circumstances. But uh, this uh, 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 genre of music, uh, which was a virtuoso uh, art uh, with objective art and the uh, skill, it disappeared from the classic form of, of rebetico represented by Marcos. And the reason has been because people wanted that. It was uh, actually people themselves that uh, made the choice. Although it's difficult uh, to capture the place and time when Rebetico appeared, however, you have helped us uh, understand and uh, get a general idea about uh, how it uh, uh, developed in what uh, social classes, uh, which physical places, and uh, with uh, what uh, sociological characteristics, what was the environment in which uh, Rebetico has grown. But then Then there has been censorship against Rebetico. It had been uh, accused before, but uh, uh, then this uh, changed. There was uh, uh, some uh, dynamics behind it, so it came back, and uh, this comeback was very uh, strong, very powerful. Okay, let's discuss uh, uh, this censorship, which is very important. Self-censorship is something that is always present not just in Greece. There have been uh, numerous discussions uh, on on this uh, subject. We should say, to help uh, the discussion, that censorship uh, was established in August uh, 1936. Metaxas uh, was on power. And uh, it's very interesting because uh, the first uh, uh, song was Varvara by Panagiotis Tundas that uh, was subject to censorship. It was a humoristic uh, song, actually, because self-sarcasm and humor is uh, uh, dominant in Rebetico. So perhaps uh, Tundas uh, had also included uh, some uh, sexual uh, hints, uh, but this was always on the level of self-sarcasm. Uh, but some people identified Varvara with uh, Metaxas uh, daughter, and uh, at the end uh, um, they found uh, uh, a pretext uh, to uh, prohibit the circulation of uh, the record. But we should say here the following. Uh, research has uh, shown that uh, censorship is uh, prepared in a public uh, uh, discourse uh, by journalists and uh, poets of that uh, uh, period. And they reacted, let's not put it in economic terms, let's not discuss uh, the commercial aspect of Rebetico, because we agree, as we say for jazz, uh, Rebetico, is a commercial uh, genre. We don't need to discuss it. But uh, um, Rebetico is uh, spread, and uh, um, it is uh, spread in a period when the state or those responsible for national strategies are heading to a fast uh, Europeanization, and they consider that uh, this undermines uh, the modernization of the country. And this is, again, a whole discussion whether uh, popular culture is uh, uh, 
responsible for the modernization of the country. This is another discussion. So actually, Metaxas has um, applied a legal process. Censorship uh, was uh, well prepared quite early. And especially for Varvara, uh, there is also appeals uh, by scholars, intellectuals, uh, please prohibit the circulation of the song. What I'm saying now is quite, uh, sounds quite shocking in our times. So obviously, many uh, artists, uh, creators, found a way through self-censorship Uh, to shape uh, new songs in a way that uh, they could uh, pass. But the censorship in Greece uh, worked in uh, Greece up until 1993. So in the very recent past, I will not discuss about uh, the military junta and Theodorakis, but uh, uh, censorship uh, uh, since uh, the era of Metaxas and afterwards, especially for the popular culture, has uh, created a new ethos. Uh, it uh, uh, has shown people how uh, to think uh, by uh, self-censorship, because although some uh, songs uh, were uh, uh, prohibited, Those were still played uh, in houses, uh, and uh, so people were prosecuted and ended up in jail. Uh, people listening to these uh, songs or uh, instrument craft uh, um, uh, makers, because they were making uh, evil uh, tools. So censorship uh, was uh, uh, incorporated in people's thinking before. Uh, uh, even thinking about anything, they had uh, to rethink and uh, uh, subject uh, uh, their thinking to self-censorship, which is even more important than censorship itself. Further to self-censorship and uh, besides what is happening automatically, a kind of social automation, Uh, it uh, is just as generically happening. Whenever something is happening and imposed by law, this is forbidden, automatically people start to abide by these rules and conform uh, to this kind of uh, attitude. It's part of their reasoning. People who wanted to resist simply stopped producing, just as the case of uh, Vangelis Papazoglu's uh, music was. There was a time when uh, the artist comes face to face with one's work and the, the historic reality. And when you are engaged in public speech, there comes a time when you have to adopt the position and you need to know uh, what to do, whom to abide uh, by and whom to side with. Well, uh, some people continued producing, some others simply stopped. It is an issue that should be um, topical of another event, perhaps. But just to say en passant that for those great producers uh, active uh, sometime uh, in our lives, well, there comes a time when they stop. Who are the big losers? Those who stop writing all those who stop benefiting from such a uh, type of art. Thank you. Mr. Tsekirian, I'm sure you have been approached by various artists and musicians uh, who shared with you experiences, or specifically whilst you lived in the States. Can you share something with us? Well, uh, there may be memories I have uh, prior to my going to America. At the age of 14, I was already working at my father's workshop uh, here in Athens, and I can recall many musicians of the time, composers and uh, this kind of uh, people who used to visit my father at his workshop. Perhaps you'd like me to uh, recount uh, that uh, case of me being eight and uh, visiting Manolis Hyotis with my father. We went to Hyotis's Uh, home to uh, deliver a baglamas, a Greek uh, typical string instrument he had ordered. And uh, Hyotis tipped me enormously to buy candy. Uh, well, uh, at uh, that price, I could buy myself a taxi load full of candy. That, that high the tip was. 
all this time, all those years, uh, so many people passed by my father's workshop. I remember many musicians coming by. Uh, at the time, it was impossible for me to truly uh, value the presence of theirs. I saw them coming in, going out. Uh, only later was I able to understand what great people they were and how uh, exquisite their art has been. Uh, I met Stelios Kazanzidis. I also saw uh, Soteria Bellu, Lemonopoulos, Hyotis, Sporos, Tasopoulos, to name only but a few. I cannot recall them all right now, but you, you understand what I'm saying. And uh, if I may ask, what was the time when you reached the peak of your art because of Remedico having fared so well and order started pouring in your workshop? Well, you see, what I can tell you for sure is that already uh, between 1966 and 1970, my father was uh, every year receiving uh, uh, a uh, letter of compliments uh, by the Minister of Commerce uh, for the kind of turnover he was generating and income coming into this country because of his craft coming from America, from Africa, from wherever there were orders for his instruments. Of course, uh, after that, my father left Greece. He immigrated to the States. He got his green card uh, as he was working for Freder. And he was a specialized craftsman that uh, entitled him to a green card that was in Los Angeles. And then once the green card was uh, secured, my father flew from uh, Los Angeles to New York uh, because he meant to specialize further on bouzouki and there was not so much of a turnover in uh, Los Angeles. In New York, the demand was much higher. That was when I went to find him in 1977. And I spent some years with my father working, although uh, reluctantly, uh, odd as it may sound to you. Many of uh, those pages of history you are sharing with us uh, are interesting, and uh, Venus is whispering some names and some places you may mention. Yes, because I remember some things he may have not uh, recalled, and... Uh, you know, I'm stressed, so I may be forgetting some things. I am stressed. I, quite frankly, I'm confessing to it. Oh, you're much more than stressed. Please don't faint. Yes, yes, I, I f- confess to it. I'm so stressed. I'm not a public speaker. I'm sorry. No, no, don't. Don't lose your good bloodness. Keep your shirt on. What I mean is that these are things you may have seen happening or some things you may have heard others narrate. Yes, some of them, well, whatever, either you or Venus, you're part of the same family. You yourself have said that uh, perseverance and uh, interest uh, was what Venus uh, demonstrated from the very beginning, indeed. And uh, when it comes to stories, I start hearing while spending time with my father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. Well, I didn't really meet that great-grandfather, but he was around because of the narrations and stories. And uh, as a child, I heard many things, stories and things uh, from musicians by my father. Uh, Little by little, parts of uh, my father's personality started to unfold, and slowly but steadily, I started retaining some pieces of this uh, story, some people, uh, names that have by then become history and tradition, they're part of our cultural heritage, and who were one way or another connected to my family. Uh, I heard stories about my great about my great grandfather, uh, him having uh, worked on uh, Van Vakari's uh, instrument or Hyotis instruments. This and this alone is enough to make me feel there is a kind of connection, however dim it may be. Uh, and uh, I am also coming closer to people in my family whom I have never had the opportunity of meeting because I died way before I came to this world, even become better acquainted with my father. When would you say that the Rebetico started to be 
uh, decriminalized. Well, it depends. Uh, well, there has been no trial of sorts to uh, acquit uh, the uh, accused, to use some legal terms. But then again, there are stereotypes we have been downplaying every now and then. We were born in uh, culpability and in this kind of guilt from birth. We have started perceiving Rebetiko in a specific way, and the specific way was twofold. First of all, uh, we were found it difficult to find a Greek root in Rebetiko, and this is an issue in Greece all the time. I wish we could live out of it, but for the moment it's there. And then there was the moral aspect, and this is something that is quite high on our agenda. Uh, even at the university, we are as yet to un- decide whether we should be spending time discussing people who have been of uh, uh, questionable morals. Uh, I-, I remember there are songs that sometimes even recount duels or some uh, obscure activities, and you even uh, listen to bizarre things happening uh, during the song. Whatever. To me, it's a kind of resistance if uh, we still discuss this despite the questionable morals. But... But to be fair, It is uh, Hatzidakis who first dared deculpabilize uh, Rembetiko back in 1948 as of a lecture he gave and uh, within the context of his cooperation with Carlos Kuhn's uh, theater. The, for the first time, uh, the Rembetiko started to come out of the obscurity. And then, during the 60s, because of the new composers who had two ways of reacting, they who had uh, the choice of going into popular song or going to classical music. These people dared, and if not uh, deculpabilizing, at least they uh, somehow helped de-escalate uh, this emotional uh, charge. But it is the 80s uh, that first uh, brought about full deculpabilization of uh, the Rebetiko. After the dictatorship and the re-institution of uh, democracy in Greece, uh, the whole context changed, and now the average Greek family, instead of scorning the Rembetiko, started to visit it. Let us not forget that uh, part of the Rembetiko is about marginality, and sometimes marginality is about resistance. The teens uh, identify themselves with that. Would you say that the uh, themes of Rambetico remain the same over time? Because we are already now in the 80s, so over this uh, percourse, all those years, and what with what has been discussed, are themes uh, the same? Obviously not. And to conclude on this, uh, to me, the culpabilize uh, may, uh, is something that happens at the university. And because I uh, like to play with uh, benchmarkings and uh, the comparison with jazz, just as the case of jazz was uh, in America, we had to wait for Clinton to have jazz uh, enter the university. As to the rest, it's an issue. In Greece, we have Rembetiko. The Piraeus Rembetiko is about the pulled strings, Baglamas, the marginality, the delinquency, and Marcos Mamakaris that starts from zero. Buzuki is there to establish a culture here. We have something. Uh, popular. It's by far not easy to say that the Rembetiko has been evolving, because after the war, the term that prevails is popular music. So then it, everything fuses in. Historically speaking, there is no more Rembetiko. After 80, the 80s, uh, we have a revival, but no new creation. Let's go back to the 40s and 50s, because time is pressing, and I have so many more questions before we close. 
and so many more questions coming from uh, others. Between the 40s and the 50s, there are so many artists of the genre. Wouldn't you say so? Indeed. Uh, music has been evolving ever since the genre and popular music uh, are in a dynamic relationship with uh, the society. Just as society changes, so uh, does music and so does popular music. This is uh, where we see people uh, with different roles. Let me remember Hyotis with you. Whereas uh, it's a person that has been playing buzuki uh, and performing Batis songs, he has performed with Tsitsanis uh, Sisionades, uh, with uh, Marcos. Sisionades, explains the speaker, is, uh, per- is referring to sessions, so people performing in uh, pre-ordered sessions. This is what session is. Chiotis has been playing the guitar uh, together with Tsitsanis. And then after the war, this great virtuoso becomes apparent. He comes forth having uh, been exposed to many different genres of music. And he is creating a new kind of uh, genre under the influence of people like Django Reinhardt playing in Paris. Uh, bringing the virtuosity uh, up to new levels and uh, addressing himself to different kind of audiences. People are different, uh, the orchestras are bigger, and uh, it's only the lyrics that he had to take from others. He was putting music to lyrics, and that was the major difference from other cre- uh, creators. <laughs> So music evolves and it it, uh, becomes a very successful genre, which is uh, similar to popular song. That was the end of Rebetiko and the change uh, to uh, Laiko, popular song, because the the public was different. The social reality was uh, changed. Uh, the living standards uh, were improved. We started uh, looking to the West, and the question has not been answered yet, where we belong. I hope uh, this uh, gets answered sometime. This is why uh, composers appear, and uh, this whole uh, history or uh, a gay uh, 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 created uh, musicians uh, who have elaborated on this uh, genre and uh, have developed this uh, genre. And this is how techniques evolved. And when uh, do women appear in Rebetiko? And what is the place of women in Rebetiko? We've we've given us a few hints, especially in the ports uh, where the activity starts around Rebetiko. But I I would like you to help us understand when woman appears in Rebetiko and how uh, Rebetes uh, treat women. Well, historically wise, they appear quite early in uh, the record, because they record-making companies and shops were owned by women. Let's uh, focus on this, because that was not very easy. Uh, It was not easy in New York for a woman uh, to uh, start a a shop in uh, the prohibition uh, period, uh, where uh, those uh, shops uh, were in uh, the borderline between lawfulness and uh, unlawfulness. And then we have Rita, for example, who uh, um, uh, make uh, such uh, songs, and those were women Uh, with um, courage, with guts, as my mother used to say. They had deserved uh, uh, their place They had, uh, in, uh, in an environment that, that was male-dominated. And uh, uh, witnesses uh, uh, from the protagonists have indicated that um, Although violence and even gender violence uh, had a, a, a central place in the value system of that society, uh, however, a uh, relation with women was a relation of uh, uh, respect. And uh, this was obvious in the songs uh, since uh, Kutsavakis' uh, period, and there were such uh, verses, such lyrics. So all uh, uh, witnesses uh, show that uh, women were respected. And the great difference uh, against uh, today is that there was morality in uh, the in those uh, days, and there was uh, an ability for self-regulation. 
in those societies, which has now been lost. There is no morality in violence. We see what happens around around us, and there is no ability for uh, self-regulation. For example, where we are today, you had to make an announcement for a, um, uh, a corridor to be uh, left open. So uh, we have lost the chance of self-regulation, of uh, regulating things that make our uh, life easier. And this uh, used to exist back then, and that's a great difference against our times. Let me add on this. Historically wise, Café Aman was the first uh, place uh, which was identified uh, to uh, uh, an entertainment uh, place, uh, uh, Café Neo, the cafe shop, uh, where women, and if women appear there, they uh, are considered to be liberal uh, women, um, dangerous women. I apologize to ladies. I'm using those terms because those were terms of those days. They were supposed to be dangerous for the morals of those times. So uh, Cafe, Cafe Aman, however, is a, uh, were places where women were allowed. As Dimitris says, and he is right, that was the first uh, professional acknowledgement of women. I repeat, it was not the same as Rebetiko in Piraeus, because the Rebetiko there was much more difficult. Uh, Rita and Rosa were singers of uh, the old school. That was not the same for Sotiria Bellu later on. And it was not the same because the places where those women, when, where, when women appeared in such places, they did know that uh, those were dangerous places. Uh, and it goes without saying that uh, even today there are such uh, uh, social reflexes. When uh, uh, women uh, are, are dealing with uh, music, uh, the people think uh, that uh, she's also a prostitute. And these are social reflexes which also indicate our music education, because we may live with music, but it w- we don't have a very good music education, so it was very difficult for women. And in the 60s, in the new uh, folk uh, song, uh, women come in. That was very difficult. We are talking about the feasts in small villages uh, in the countryside. And there were uh, women who were injured, uh, not by musicians, but by people. So uh, what is changing in uh, the era of Sotiria Bellu? Well, Sotiria Bellu had a difficult life, uh, the same as Marcos. They have many uh, things in common. I think uh, Sotiria Bellu uh, uh, is a protagonist in the post-war uh, folk song. And we could say a lot about uh, Bellu. Uh, she is uh, um, no gender, actually, uh, asexual because uh, of her uh, sexual orientation. So she is, uh, it's easier, uh, let's say, to uh, treat her. She is a woman who has a male behavior, let's say, in a world of men, and she knows that she has to struggle to survive in this place. What is extremely interesting with Bellu, the same as Marcos, is that they do not uh, fulfill the standards of virtuosity, as uh, Dimitri said before. She's not uh, the great, uh, excellent um, musician or singer such as Rosa Eskenazi or uh, Marcos uh, compared to Dalcas, Rukunas, and other uh, artists. But, uh, the, but the, what they did, what they managed, had been uh, to give an emotional charge and energy uh, to the text of Rebetiko, because they were actually singing their life. Because in music, we have uh, two options, let's say. One is uh, to tell your story. And this is why uh, Marcos is always touching, and he will continue doing so, because he tells his story. The other option is uh, to uh, set up a story. Tudas, for example, has written Cocainopotis, uh, the cocaine um, uh, drinker. And uh, some people say, but uh, uh, Tundas was not taking cocaine. 
uh, while Van Vakaris uh, tells his own story, uh, or Bellu tells her story, uh, many uh, popular musicians uh, say that in order for a singer to be a good singer, uh, she needs to have suffered in her life. Uh, this uh, sounds uh, sexist, but uh, my point is that Bellu uh, has uh, uh, survived because uh, in it was, that was an era where it was difficult for a woman to gain a professional status uh, in a rebetico. And she also had to handle other uh, particularities or peculiarities uh, that she had. So, so what she did was amazing. Okay, let's come to the era where Rebetico has uh, gone into the universities. It is uh, decriminalized, and um, this is uh, now clear. I would like uh, both of you to say what uh, you have done in uh, the School of Ioannina. What is exactly the subject matter of your department, your faculty, and how do you teach Rebetico? This is off the microphone. This is about some trial, some hearing that has not yet taken place. Well, yeah, concerning the decriminalization, uh, it is uh, true that uh, Rebetico has been exonerated, let's say. Uh, the point is that it also has to be desanctified because we went from one end to the other. Uh, as a musician dealing with Rebetico, and since I love Rebetico, the desirable, the goal is at last uh, for us as listeners, as the public, and also uh, those in charge I've seen Mrs. Coniordu, for example, former uh, Minister for Culture. Uh, this uh, uh, work is incomplete. It has been incomplete for many, many years. Our school has been there for 20 years. And uh, there are two other university faculties uh, teaching folk uh, or people's music. And uh, it's, uh, however, the musical instruments for that music have not been acknowledged or recognized. And this is unbelievable. I don't know why this happens. In the beginning, we used to say that there is no theoretical system. No, it does exist. We said that there was no bibliography, no literature. No, there is indeed. Or we were saying there's no continuity. There is indeed continuity, because this has been here for whole decades. So what we should uh, do is uh, uh, to look into this in an objective and impartial manner. We have a genre of music which we love, because we have grown up with this. Uh, we we have combined it uh, to, we have associated this uh, to our young, uh, uh, young age or resistance to the status quo or disobedience. Uh, so there are different uh, costumes that uh, this music has been vested. Uh, but uh, we should uh, look into this as a music uh, genre and uh, check what the value is of this uh, music. Uh, why are, are we? dealing with Rebetico. What is the objective artistic value of this music? What are the components of this music? Why is it that this uh, music uh, concerns also sociologists or anthropologists and other disciplines? So let's uh, 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 put this music on its right place. Uh, I mean, irrespective of uh, emotions and ideologies. Objectively, let's uh, judge this objectively and uh, uh, rule whether it is an art or not. We have made up our mind we are serving this uh, 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 discipline, but uh, uh, what about the others? I am uh, uh, teaching uh, in uh, universities, and there are graduates uh, who have uh, graduated this uh, 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 from this university, this faculty, and uh, there is no um, outcome, no output. And it, it is not just about uh, uh, people's guitar. Uh, Rebetico has been acknowledged by UNESCO, and uh, Rebetico is the only music uh, genre that was recognized, but without its musical instruments. It was uh, uh, recognized uh, uh, just as music, not with its musical instruments. Why, while we are talking about techniques, musical instruments, uh, uh, techniques that have uh, been developing throughout the years, and no one has noticed uh, uh, the work that we have started with people's guitar, uh, popular guitar, it was not about Rebetico because Rebetico has been acknowledged, has a history of 100 years. It will never die. It does not need UNESCO or the workshops that we have been organizing. This is what we need and not Rebetico. But what I've done with UNESCO has been uh, to 
uh, surround our own people because I said if UNESCO is recognizing it, there will be some uh, movement here while this has not been the case. So I am personally teaching a subject matter in uh, the uh, higher education in the state university, which is only uh, acknowledged by this faculty and nobody else. And uh, those graduates cannot go anywhere uh, to become teachers. Despite all the interest is there amongst the young uh, to come and uh, attend this curriculum, well, if there is anything I can be happy about is that there are people who need to learn an instrument, they want to do that, irrespective of uh, the professional perspective afterwards. They're coming to Arta just to be taught Greek popular guitar. That's all they want. They don't aspire to anything else. Let me indulge in a short comment. Uh, Nasus and myself are colleagues. We are part of a small team. What Dimitri says is something that really uh, vexes me. 19 months and more uh, we've been spending talking about it. Well, I'm trying to use the Angela Merkel terms and say at least I am getting a salary that helps me pay my taxes. Um, Dimitris uh, has not been teaching things uh, uh, in a context of a professional uh, gratification. Two of his graduates came out into the market and uh, they formed a musical band with their professor. If these uh, young people uh, were to teach this instrument at a school, they would be told that this instrument is not uh, figuring on the approved lists. So there is no decriminalization. Well, yes, once Mr. Kokonis uh, finishes, will there be questions from the floor? Yes, uh, let me finish with a more optimistic message rather than grudge, because what we do is grudge. Uh, that's what we do in Greece. The fact is that uh, just as in the case of the University of Macedonia and in the University of uh, Ioannina, we are uh, in a way demonstrating this effort to decriminalize uh, Rembetico. Our uh, mission is to trigger uh, a fruitful debate. It is up to the students to uh, open up the uh, theme and uh, discuss further. Whatever we may say, now things are happening and we expect to be wiser in the years to come. The microphone goes to Mrs. Uh, Coniordu. Let me share with you something I have experienced personally uh, after 40 or so years of uh, active uh, dealing with traditional issues and folk uh, art aspects. I believe that this land over time has been uh, deeply uh, downplaying whatever comes from the people, from the tradition. Let me remind you all how late uh, was it uh, before this instrument started to be taught at uh, conservatories. Even the Byzantine song was uh, at times uh, left aside and not taught at conservatories. As of a research I carried out trying to put some order in, uh, into these things and balance these uh, uh, long years of scorning uh, for these people, for these uh, young people who spend so much time studying uh, this discipline, they will never be able to get a job in the public sector. Uh, it's been since 1953. Uh, and a, a royal decree at the time that anything serious has happened about these people. Nobody has dealt to incorporate our uh, tradition and folk art into uh, the uh, educational system. 
which indeed is a very serious uh, weakness. With that, let me put through a question. You said that uh, the rebetical song was criminalized because it was not considered to be of Greek origin. So then, musically speaking, what was it? Was Rebetico the sequel to a kind of uh, musical experience? Was it something the refugees brought to the mainland uh, from Asia Minor? Was Rebetico a Greek kind of music? Well, in saying so, what I try to prove is uh, that we might not touch upon this uh, difficult uh, subject. Uh, the greasity of uh, the genre is questionable uh, because we don't really know what uh, we mean by Greek. What I will say is that whereas most information we have about Rebetico uh, comes from a time when empires crumble and uh, new national states happen, nevertheless, uh, Rebetico remains a musical genre that is uh, the product of uh, a time when people are about uh, out and about with multiple identities. And it is part of our quest for Greecity and Greek identity. And uh, I, for example, I am a Wallach. I speak uh, Wallach. I come from uh, Helohori in Ceres. And my national origins are Wallach. So what is my national origin? I have spent time in Paris. Um, I speak and, and I write in French just as I do in Greek. Am I, does this make me more or less Greek than you are? Rebetico comes uh, with a multiplicity of uh, identities, and uh, there have been uh, features in Rebetico coming from various uh, traditions. Just as in Asia Minor, there were people speaking different languages, coming from different cultures. For example, Rebetko can be sung by the lords at a club in London, or it may be performed out uh, on uh, the thoroughfare. By that saying that uh, this is a major problem. Uh, once national states started to be created, uh, borders had to be built, and some kind of common culture Uh, set up to avoid having problems of identity in its interior. But music transcends borders, and that's the whole point. So, Rebetico should be perceived as a kind of heritage, uh, which from the very beginning was that exactly, uh, the heritage of a great area, that of the Mediterranean. Every time we're trying to add a feature that is attempting to uh, hint uh, propriety. It is as if we were meant to say that this might be ours. It is mostly ours. Well, there are many other questions in suspense. Yes, well, at the time before the censorship, yes. All this uh, uh, was uh, recorded as a Turkish um, remnant. Sofia Spanoudis, one of the most important musical, musicologists of the time, said that uh, Rebetico was part of our slavery. What I say is Rebetico is a fusion product by people of multiple identities. We fail to grasp this uh, today. We need to travel a bit about to understand what I say. A refugee uh, hitting the mainland back then, uh, carrying all those different traditions. Don't forget that some refugees were uh, treated as Turks when they landed uh, in the mainland. Let me say this. At Greek universities, no instrument is taught. For example, the violoncello. Uh, to learn the violoncello, you have to attend the courses at uh, the conservatory. No wrong, sir. You may also go and attend courses at the uh, Ionian uh, University. You may develop your uh, studies and even become graduated. So you, uh, you need 15 years to graduate uh, in the violoncello as a virtuoso violoncello for something like a year and a half. By law, 
a piano graduate from the University of Macedonia or violoncello, for example, do you mean that um, there are uh, courses uh, of piano or violoncello at the University of Macedonia? Yes, uh, for some time now. Oh, I didn't know that. But uh, what critically is, it's been around for a year. A person enrolling at the University of Ionian uh, or Macedonia uh, f- to attend the violoncello courses, the degree to uh, be awarded is uh, equivalent to that of an official conservatory. But of course, it goes without saying that people do not start from scratch when they enter the university. Uh, they have sat for some examinations, uh, access examinations. But I think I understand what you're asking about. It's about the very Greek problem of uh, the inexistence of musical academies, but it's another issue. So how many instruments are taught? Every every instrument present uh, at the symphonic orchestra. Elena Papandreou, for example, is a uh, permanent uh, professor at the university. Any other question? Microphone. Kalispera. Good evening. Let me refer myself to a part of your debate which I found extremely interesting. Something about the criminalization, the uh, persecution of Rembetico, uh, uh, the censorship or self-censorship you mentioned. The impression was created, and quite aptly so, that uh, the persecutor of uh, Uh, Rebetiko was the uh, right-wing uh, uh, politics of the time, especially Metaxas, and the, he even uh, de- had Rebetiko deported to the islands. No, this is not true. Metaxas was uh, deporting people who uh, were using uh, drugs and were uh, also wanderers, Rebetas. So it is um, like uh, that was chastised by the bourgeois of the time that were more Western-minded. But sometimes even the communist left of the time also persecuted uh, Rembetes, uh, ideologically, but also materially in countries of uh, political um, exile. Uh, they have been perse- persecuting Rebetico and quite virulently. The decriminalization of Rebetico also, in a way, happened uh, because of Hadzidaki's lecture to this very conservative audience. Otherwise, for several decades after that, uh, the uh, conservatives also went against Rebetico, but also the communists did so. All this I do not say just to reinstate some kind of equilibrium, but you are quite right what you're saying. But we mean we need to see this differently and wonder how come the Rembetico song was persecuted by so many different sides, the right wing and the left wing. Practically all of the Greek society, with the exception of those who were somehow marginalized, Thank you for these remarks. Uh, This is not something we have been uh, retaining uh, deliberately. It didn't happen. Uh, It wasn't raised during the debate. Uh, I said, I think, that it was the Greek society, it was the Greek intelligentsia, mostly, that were persecuting uh, persecuting the uh, Rembetico, especially in decision-making centers. And I believe the Greek society continues, in a way, to demonstrate this hostile attitude. Uh, to me, things should be seen differently. As far as the conservatives are concerned, I believe that Besides Rembetico, other forms of uh, popular expression was as if uh, they would be pulling back evolution. Of course, it's very difficult to explain. We don't have time. Greece is about identities. It's also about what kind of Greeks do we have in mind when we speak identities. Are these the intelligentsia coming from uh, Constantinople? of times past. Are these the Greek Enlightenment people from uh, Wallachia uh, or what? It's also about uh, 
the conscience of the workman. Uh, Rembetico is not identifying with just one kind of worker. Even uh, one of my mentors in Paris, Anianakos, uh, dubbed uh, this last period as a workman period, maybe because he is of his political uh, ideas. And the speaker is uh, quoting the lyrics of a folk song that was turned Rembetico. In those lyrics, my professor saw some uh, partisanship mentality or some class clustering mentality. Whatever the case, people producing the Rembetico were trying to identify themselves with some kind of evolution. But we need to be lucid and uh, accept that even the left and some journalists and some people of the intelligentsia also persecuted uh, Rembetico. We are sensitive, but people who were very much uh, someone, somebody, they did also uh, help build some kind of mentality vis-a-vis the Rembetico. I would even say that The lab that created censorship is school. Let us be lucid about it. There is a uh, notoriously well-known text by a teacher somewhere in the provinces of Greece where the school teacher, in the aftermath of uh, some music uh, lessons, uh, uh, sent a letter to the ministry asking for the rebellion to be removed because uh, most of the students sing Calvaras, Mitsakis, or other uh, popular music uh, composers. The shocking is uh, that uh, there was a whole dialogue he was reporting. Why don't you like it? The school child told the master, the uh, teacher. Not just the society. Any other questions? So we live today a revival, we experience a revival of Rebetico. Now concerning uh, learning of instruments, uh, there are a few young people who learn how to play buzuki or baglamas uh, today and popular music, Greek popular music, uh, Greek popular guitar rather. So what uh, What's the future for those young people? And since uh, we, we see nowadays this revival, and since uh, there are great uh, differences uh, versus uh, the way uh, instruments uh, used to be taught in the past, uh, while today you have to go to a conservatory or a school uh, to learn how to play. So um, uh, can we hear the emotions that they will express as young people uh, so that we can make something new, perhaps uh, with uh, these instruments or new instruments. Well, first, I don't understand the question very well. I don't understand the question, what's the future for those uh, young people who learn how to play instruments? They will be musicians in the future. That's, the, that's going to be their future. Uh, so I don't get your question. Well, I, I, I'm not asking about their professional future. This is not what I'm asking. Um, I'm, I'm asking whether uh, there is a future for a, a, a movement, a current, as the continuation or the, uh, the, uh, the continuation of Rebetico. Look, there is not going to be Rebetico, uh, a new Rebetico, as there is not going to be new Acropolis. So there is uh, uh, new types of music, uh, which is uh, the successor of Rebetico. So there is new music written by. Uh, young people, and I believe that uh, music-wise, uh, in terms of uh, 
popular instruments and popular culture, technically and aesthetically wise, we are in our best period because uh, young musicians are better compared uh, to my generation, technically and aesthetically wise, and uh, they, ha- they, they have fully realized uh, the objective, uh, the artistic value of this music. So what uh, re- those young people create is, is great. So what we need to do is support those young people who write music and are trying to play music. It's like um, it's like going after live in our days. Uh, I'm not talking about big music scenes and uh, the big uh, nightclubs uh, which are well established. Since I've gone through this uh, process, uh, preservation of a place uh, for live music, I would tell you that this is impossible. It's not feasible. It's impossible to have a place uh, hosting live music, uh, so live performances with uh, musicians uh, being lawful. It is just impossible. So yes, there is music, uh, music is being created, but not rebetic, of course. A short answer on this. When uh, we started our department in the year 2000, we had in mind that Uh, studying uh, popular uh, culture uh, should uh, contain other subject matters, if if you like, uh, to avoid uh, uh, having only exercises in that uh, department, uh, such as uh, Bekikov, Evdokia, or Hasapo, uh, or uh, Fragosiriani. So we wanted people to understand where this music comes from. Now, if... uh, uh, If you are to be uh, touched uh, by a player, music player, uh, singing Franco Siriani, well, this is not easy because Van Bakaris is not uh, alive uh, today. It's the same as actors who need uh, to touch uh, the audience. This is not possible. So it's not just about the person who writes the history, the the story, it's about the person who uh, narrates the story. So the point is, in our days, can uh, we uh, live again this experience? This is uh, what uh, has ended in Greece, and it it only exists in uh, village uh, uh, celebrations, feasts. Because uh, even in uh, um, the concerts, uh, squares, it's not the same, because you cannot uh, uh, dance or order songs, because this ordering songs is a communication between uh, the listener and the musician. But you see, uh, if uh, in in a village uh, feast, a rich uh, guy can uh, shape the whole program, because he can choose and order all the songs he likes. One more question, and then we close. Of the microphone. There have been numerous rever- references uh, to the US, uh, particularly New York, where you have been for 17 years. What has the role been of uh, U.S. Greeks? What is the role that the Greeks in the U.S. have played in uh, the development of Rebetiko? I said that in the beginning. Musicians, uh, Greek musicians uh, who migrated there, had in their ears uh, the music uh, they they had from their home country, and they found fertile ground in that uh, country, in the um, discography companies, and there were even Greek uh, record-making companies in the U.S. So they found the environment ready, and they started recording. And then we re-imported here those uh, musics that had been recorded in the U.S., and this is how we had the whole circle of feedback. Uh, So migrants, when their songs were written here, recorded in the U.S., and they were coming back to Greece. So uh, this is the discographic, if you like, form of uh, Rebetiko. Well, to close uh, this uh, uh, subject, Let's make a a working assumption, which is, of course, uh, um, a basic assumption. 
1931 January or 1932 January, there was a Greek uh, uh, burglar, actually, a thief, uh, so a person uh, with uh, a delinquent uh, life, uh, Jack Gregory, uh, and he recorded uh, uh, the Minore of the Kes. So, uh, Spiros Peristeris, the great musician and composer, heard this uh, song and he did a copy-paste. He played the same uh, eight months later. So we could say that uh, this uh, uh, th- th- you, there are two sides of the record. So you could say that this uh, built the history of music here, of, uh, of uh, Buzuki here. So that was the impact. And uh, since uh, in the U.S. there was uh, recording technology, perhaps uh, this was not direct impact, but indirect effects. We know that Karapi Peris, for example, uh, was the first one uh, who recorded uh, in 1928-29 playing Buzuki. And another working assumption that is very important, Peristeris, as a producer, has uh, played a very important role in my view. Seeing the commercial uh, success of uh, uh, the recording of Halkias, so the recording of uh, Buzuki in the U.S., and uh, since uh, it was very attractive in the U.S., he was looking for something similar here that could be recorded and sold, because we are talking about the product, of course. And he found Marcus, who had everything uh, alive and uh, uh, ready. He, the whole uh, Greek culture, uh, uh, he embodied the whole Greek culture. That's why I said the product is not necessarily bad, because Marcos was uh, commercial and good at the same time, which was a very happy coincidence. Now, what is going to follow? Uh, what we are going to play, you're asking. Well, we will um, uh, have an overview uh, to all different periods of Rebetico for an hour. So we are starting with the music performance. We thank you all. We thank uh, the audience. We will continue, of course, with the music. We thank all those uh, who have joined us on the web. Um, Of course, uh, things uh, were quite difficult in uh, Rebetico, but our next appointment will be in April. We will discuss Europe, since uh, Mr. Kokonis, you have made a reference to Europe. Uh, So our next uh, dialogue Looks appointment is about Europe uh, just be- be- before the European elections. Let's enjoy your music.